Hi guys, welcome to this video on the interview questions of configuration management tools, Chef, Ansible and Puppet. Chef is a configuration management tool written in Ruby and Erlang, which provides continuous deployment, increases system robustness and provides cloud integration. Ansible is another open source software tool for provisioning configuration management and application deployment. And Puppet is a configuration management tool that can also be used as a deployment tool and implements infrastructure as a code. In this video, we have compiled the most important interview questions of configuration management tools, Chef, Ansible and Puppet that you might face in a DevOps interview. So without further ado, let's get started. So let's just get into the first section, which is configuration management. So one of the questions that you'll get asked right away is why do you have SSL certificates used for Chef? Really fundamentally, your immediate answer should be security. SSL provides for a very high level of private security and private and public key pairing. This really is essential to ensure that you have a secure environment throughout your entire network. The second part should be that if you're using SSL and you're using the private public key model within SSL, you're able to guarantee the systems on your network that the chef, that you'll be able to validate that the nodes within your network that chef is validating against actually are the real nodes themselves, not imposters. So you will also be asked um, some questions um, such as the following, which of the following commands would you use to stop or disable the HTTP service when the system boots? And you'll typically get four responses and there'll be hashtag system CTL disable HTTPD dot service, or is it system disable HTTP dot service, system disable HTTPD, or the final option, which is system CTL disable HTTPD dot service. Your answer should be the first one, which is hashtag system CTL disable HTTP dot service. So Chef comes with a series of tools that allow it to function effectively. And one of the tools that you're going to be asked about is what is Test Kitchen. And Test Kitchen is essentially a command line tool that allows you to be able to test out your cookbook before you actually deploy it to a real node. So some of the commands that you would use are for instance if you want to create an instance of test kitchen you would do kitchen create if you want to destroy an instance after you've created it you do kitchen destroy and if you want to be able to combine multiple instances you would do kitchen converge so a question you'll get is around chef is how does chef apply differ from chef client and so fundamentally the difference between them is that chef apply will validate the recipe that you're working on whereas chef client looks to apply and validate the entire cookbook that's run in your server environment so one is focused on the recipe and the other is focused on the entire cookbook so there are some differences when you're working with different command lines so for instance when you're working with uh, puppets and you're working with one version of puppets and you want to do what is the command to sign a requested certificate the top example here is for puppet version 2.7 whereas the lower option here is for puppet version 3 and that's something to bear in mind when you're going through your interview process is that the tools that are used within a continuous integration continuous delivery devops model do vary and so you want to be able to talk knowledgeably about the different versions of the tools so that when you're talking to your interviewer you're able to show the deep knowledge that you have which open source or community tools do you use to make Puppet more powerful? And essentially this question is going to be asking you to look beyond the core foundation of Puppet itself. And so the three options you have is uh, being able to track configurations with Jira, which you should be doing anyway, but it's a great way to be able to clearly communicate the work that's being done with Puppet. Uh, version control can be extended with Git. And then the changes should be passed through Jenkins. So the three tools you want to be looking at, integration with Jira, Git, and Jenkins. So what are the resources in Puppet? Well, fundamentally, there are four. The resources are a basic unit of any configuration management tool. They are the features of the nodes. They are the written catalog and the execution of the catalog on a node. 
So as we dig deeper into Puppet, one of the things that you are likely to be asked regarding Puppet is what is a class in Puppet? And so a class in Puppet is really the name blocks in your manifest that, that contain the various configurations. And this can include services, files, and packages. And we have on the screen here an example of what a class would look like when you write it out. And you may want to memorize just one class. Don't memorize just a whole set of classes. Just memorize one. The person that's interviewing you is just really looking for someone who has a working knowledge. They're not looking for you to have memorized complete massive classes but having one small class to be able to illustrate the experience you have is extremely valuable to the interviewer particularly if it's a technical interview so as we move into ansible one of the things that you're going to be asked around ansible is what is ansible role so a role is an independent block of tasks and variable files and templates embedded with inside of the playbook so the example we have here on the screen actually shows you one role within a playbook and in this role it is to install tomcat on a node Again, as with previous question within Puppet of a class, it's probably good to have memorized just one or two roles so you can talk knowledgeably about Ansible when you're having your interview. So when you're working with Ansible, when should you be using the curly brackets? And so just as a frame of reference, uh, there's often two different ways that these kind of brackets are referred to. Uh, they're either referred to as French brackets or curly brackets. Either way, uh, what you'll be wanting to ask uh, is when would you use these specific types of brackets within Ansible? And really, the answer comes down to two things. One is that it makes it easier to distinguish strings and undefined variables. And the second is for putting together conditional statements when you are actually using variables. And the example we have here is this prints the value of, and we have foo, and we have to then put in the variable conditional statement of foo is defined as something. So what is the best way to make content reusable and redistributable with Ansible? And there's really essentially three. The first is to include a submodule or another file in your playbook. The second is to import an improvement of an include, which ensures that a file is added only once. And then the third is roles to manage the tasks within the playbook. So a question you will be asked is provide a differences between Ansible and Puppets. So if we look at Ansible, it's a very easy agentless installation. It's based on Python. You can configure it with YAML and there are no support for Windows. In contrast, Puppet is an agent-based installation. It's written in Ruby. The configuration files are written in DSL and it has support on all popular operating systems. So we dig deeper into the actual architecture. Ansible, it has a much more simple architecture and it's definitely a push only architecture. In contrast to Puppet, it's a more complicated but more sophisticated architecture where you're able to have a complete environment managed by the Puppet architecture. With that, we have reached the end of this video on the interview questions of configuration management tools, Chef Ansible and Puppet. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do like and share it. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more from Simply Learn. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.